Number 1. Pee Break I do a lot of driving. Probably a lot more than most people. I don't drive for a living or anything like that. It's just that I live pretty far from my extended family, and I hate flying. I love visiting them, so I'm always driving back and forth. I can't tell you how many long and empty highways I have driven on at night, through the desert, through the rain, through the snow and hail. People who drive a lot know two things. Once you drive on one route over and over again, you sort of go on autopilot. Next, there are times when you are on long stretches of highway in which you will not see a rest area or any place to go to the bathroom. Since I mostly drive overnight, I also tend to drink a lot of coffee on these trips. This happened about five years ago. I was on the way to visit my grandmother. She lives out east, and I live in California. I was out driving at night, drinking my coffee as usual, when I realized I had to go to the bathroom really, really bad. But I hadn't seen anything in a while. Not a rest area and not a gas station. Nothing. It was one of those instances when you really feel like you have to go. I also hadn't seen many cars, and after a while, I knew I'd have to pull over and go behind a bush. I debated it for a few minutes, literally squirming in my chair. I finally decided to not delay any longer, and I pulled my car over. I ran off to the side of the road and took care of the issue. I ran back to my car, jumped into the driver's seat, and went back on my way. I felt like a million dollars at that point, and that was until I glanced up into my rearview mirror. There was someone sitting right behind me in my car, and he knew I saw him because our eyes met in the mirror. He looked like a vagrant, gruff and dirty, and our eyes remained locked for a moment. Before I could do anything, the man leaned forward and pressed something up against my neck. I knew it was a knife. I began panicking and wondering how the guy got into the car and when had he done it. Had he been in there since my last stop before the bathroom break? Had I just been that unlucky to stop and go to the bathroom where someone was waiting for a hapless driver to come by? But none of that really mattered while he had a knife up against my neck. I tried to ask him not to hurt me but he made sure that I did not speak a word to him. He pressed deep with the knife. I felt tears going down my eyes, overly sure that this man was about to kill me. Instead, he told me to slowly reach into my pocket and take out my wallet. I did, and I slowly handed it to him. He took my cash out of it and my credit cards. I had a lot of cards and this made him pretty happy. That plus maybe about $500 in cash. After he removed everything, he threw my wallet into the front passenger seat. He then instructed me that there would be a turn coming up on my right in a few miles, and I was to take it. I did. I drove down a very lonely and dark dirt road, not knowing where this psycho was taking me, or what he would do to me. Eventually, I came up to an old, beaten-up trailer. It was like something from a horror movie, like Wrong Turn or something. I expected him to get out and kill me. He did tell me to get out, and I did. He followed. I prepared for the worst. He, however, just reached into my car, pulled out the wallet, and threw it at me. He then got on a motorcycle. He told me to wait one hour before leaving, and if I didn't, he would kill me the next time that he saw me. He then drove off. I waited the hour and drove to the police. I reported the guy and what happened. He hadn't done anything with my credit cards, so I figured he had only taken them to make it harder for me to get to the police. I was lucky 
that all the guy got was some money. I mean, he took a piece of me with him when he left. My security. And I'm still freaked out whenever I get into my car, wondering if someone is in the back seat. And whenever I tell this story, I wonder how long he had been in that back seat, waiting to do what he did. Number two, flat tire. It sucks when someone basically ruins it for everyone else. I like to believe that people are basically good. However, there are people out there who try to take advantage of that idea. And those are really the worst kind of people. I work a second shift job at a call center. I like it because I'm a night person anyway. But the greatest thing is that there is no traffic at all going home. I can just shoot home as quick as possible. Not having many cars on the road backfired on me once, though. I get off work at 11 p.m. This night, I was really, really exhausted. However, as I was on the freeway, I noticed up ahead that someone was pulled over, and it appeared that they were working on their car. I'm sure we've all seen it, and we all wonder if we should stop and help. If it was busier, I probably wouldn't have helped. I would have thought another car would do better than me, but there weren't many cars, so I decided to go and do a good deed. I pulled over in front of the car and got out of my car. I asked a person who looked like he was trying to change his tire if he needed any help. I walked over to his rear passenger side door, who was in the process of jacking the car up. He waved me away. And when I didn't leave, he turned and ran away. I was a bit surprised, until I looked into the passenger seat and saw a woman tied up and gagged in the back seat of the car. I grabbed my phone and called the police. I had turned my back on the guy, though, and he struck me from behind, knocking me out. The very next thing I remembered was coming to as the police cars pulled up. The car with the flat tire was still there, but the girl and the guy were gone. My car was also gone. It didn't take long for the police to find out what happened. It turned out that this had been going on. The girl in the back seat wasn't even a prisoner. She was an accomplice. It was a scheme to steal my car. The guy was a fugitive and wanted for murder, so he and his girlfriend frequently tried to change cars. Mine wasn't found for days, and when it was, it was abandoned. My registration was missing from the glove box, and it had my address on it. The whole thing made me very uneasy. I was never aware if the people got caught, and they knew where I lived. If the guy was wanted for murder, and I was a witness, how did I know they wouldn't come back for me? They never did. But... It still took a long time to feel comfortable again. Number 3. The Gas Station I remember when Roger Ebert was alive. He would always mention certain movie cliches that he always noticed. The one I remember the most was that in horror movies... The protagonist often will stop at a really run-down gas station that looked like it was run by inbred hillbillies. He felt it was unrealistic. Now, while I think that may be the case now, I've seen some pretty awful gas stations back in my day. This took place in the 70s. I had rented a cabin to spend a week's vacation in. Oh yeah. This was before all the movies came out with the Cabin in the Woods cliché. I thought I'd get away and work on some of my poetry and the comforts of nature. The only problem was I got lost. A lot of the roads that got you off the main road were unnamed. The one I was looking for, I later found out, was one of those. So I ended up, after being lost for a couple hours down a road that had a sign pointing me to a gas station. 
when I pulled up to the station, I was immediately nervous. It was exactly like the sort of thing you would see in a scary movie. It was a rundown shack with one dirty fuel pump. I at first thought it was abandoned, but then I noticed an old man in a rocking chair on the porch. I figured somebody would be able to give me some directions. I parked the side so as to not block the gas pump. I got up and walked to the porch, asking the old man if he worked there. He gestured for me to walk into the building. I did, and was just shocked that such a place could even exist. The wood in the walls was evidently rotting. They actually had a small sandwich case, of which I wouldn't have bought anything from if they gave it to me for free. But they also had a cooler with drinks, and shelves with candy and chips. And at the counter was a creepy looking individual, whose clothes were dirty. He had a very ungroomed beard, and one of his eyes was closed. I later learned there was no eye there, which was why the lid was closed. I went up and asked him if he knew where the road I was looking for was. He scowled and asked if I was going to buy anything or needed gas. I told him I'd probably pick up a drink, but more than anything, I needed directions. I explained where I was going, and he was familiar with the area, so he told me how to get there. I thanked him and left, completely forgetting that I told him I was going to buy something. He started swearing under his breath. I just tried to hurry and get away from the place. Maybe it was rude that I didn't get anything, but I just felt uncomfortable in there. When I got outside, I noticed two things. First, the man on the rocking chair was no longer on the chair. Second, he was over at my car. The door was open, and he was rummaging through my things. I figured that was why the cashier was upset that I had left without buying, because his friend was trying to rob me. I yelled at the guy, and I approached him. He heard me coming, and right when I was about to grab him and pull him away from my car, he slashed me with a pocket knife, right on the arm. I yelled and gripped my arm. He had something in his arms from my car, and he took it and went back to the store. I just decided I needed to get the hell out of there. I'd have to find a hospital. I got in my car and drove off. It only took about 20 minutes before I saw a police car behind me, and its lights and sirens went off. I pulled over. The officer got out of his car and ordered me to get out of mine with my hands up. I didn't know what that was about, but I did what I was told. I yelled at him that I needed to get to a hospital because someone attacked me. The officer arrested me without telling me anything. He took me to the jail, and I was in a cell for several hours before anyone told me anything. Apparently, right after I left the gas station, the owner called the police and told them I robbed them, and that when they confronted me, I tried to attack them, and the guy had to cut me to defend himself. They claimed I tried to steal a hunting knife from them. I realized then that is what they stole from my car. That hunting knife helped me a lot, because it was an engraved present from my father. When the police confronted the guys with that information, they knew that they had lied. However, by the time they released me and got me to a hospital, I had already picked up an infection in the wound. But I remember seeing them bringing in the guy with the missing eye, and he grumbled to me, My cousins know where you're staying. I cut my losses went to the hospital, and then drove home. I never even saw the cabin. Hey all, Killer Orange Cat here. What a week, huh? And I still have a day left. I hope you've enjoyed the increase in content. It really is a whole lot of work, but it is very worth it. First thing I want to tell you is that my sister has set up a small merchandise page for t-shirts. I am including the link to that in the description. 
I have had several people send me emails asking me to come up with some sort of merchandise. It seems really weird to me that anyone would want a t-shirt that has something to do with me, but I find it very flattering. I hadn't intended on doing this myself, so my sister set it up for me. Take a look at the page. The address is in the description, and I'd love any feedback about it, or any ideas you might have. For now, if you like this video, please let me know by hitting the like button. If you're not already subscribed to Killer Orange Cat, please consider hitting the subscribe button below, or use the icon of Ichigo that will appear at the end of this closing. Leave me a comment to let me know what you thought of the video, and feel free to share it with someone you think might enjoy it. If you have a story you like narrated on Killer Orange Cat, please send it to the address provided in the description. My only requirement is that it is original, meaning it has not been read on any other YouTube channel. In the meantime, please don't forget to make sure to check in your closet and check under your bed, because you never know where a killer orange cat might be hiding. Good night.